riqueza de los alimentos, solo por Wobby. Own label is a fundamental threat to the entire philosophy of branding. It's had a profound impact on all the big food manufacturers. If you look at processed foods overall in Britain, the rise of own brands was a major threat. But the cereal sector was interestingly resistant to own brands. They didn't really encroach on the market very much. Unlike other food sectors, where own label has taken nearly half of the market, branded cereals have held on to an 80% share. So why do people choose branded cereals? Good question. Uh, I think they trust, first of all, advertising. Uh, they trust what you tell them, and what you tell them is true. The supreme advantage branded cereals have over own brand is that we all grew up with them. They're among the first foods we engage with emotionally as children. Breakfast cereals have been targeted so relentlessly from their very first days, uh, particularly at children. Uh, and they're very much part of the food that people are weaned on. I grew up eating Frosties and Cocoa Pops and Fruit Loops. I still eat Frosties and Cocoa Pops and Fruit Loops today. And if my life gets more hectic, it's nice to have some of these things that you can hold on to that tie you back to your childhood and tie you back to when you were younger. And the bonds we make in childhood are the hardest to break. This is the trump card that has allowed the cereal super brands to see off the own label challenge. But this strategy, for all its advantages, would also prove the industry's Achilles heel in its struggle with increasingly determined regulators. Good afternoon. Junk food adverts during any programmes aimed at children are set to be banned. The broadcasting watchdog Ofcom wants the new rules to cover products high in fat, salt and sugar. The announcement on November the 17th, 2006, would have huge repercussions for the cereal industry and our perception of it. The majority of all cereals, including leading brands like Frosties and Cocoa Pops, were officially labelled too sugary to be advertised on children's television. It genuinely, I think, came as a shock to the industry, which, which to some extent believed its own marketing that it was healthy. I think the decision to uh, introduce restrictions on the marketing of foods high in fat, sugar and salt to children was a really important uh, landmark in our attempt to begin to change the broad environment uh, which influences in uh, all kinds of different ways the food choices that people make. But for government advisor Susan Jebb, cereals do have many benefits. For the most part, breakfast cereals, I think, have led to real health improvements. They can be a very significant source of fiber, and they certainly add quite a lot of, of micronutrients, vitamins and, and minerals to the diet. But not all cereals are equal from a nutrition point of view. I would be delighted if these very high sugar breakfast cereals, which are essentially very close to being sweets, were obliterated from the market. I have uh, no desire to see them uh, promoted or advertised. Children's cereals are worth over 600 million pounds, nearly half of the total market. The manufacturers had little choice but to step into line. There were some new regulations that came in in 2007 that said some products can be advertised to children, some products cannot. Well, we, of course, abided by those regulations. Kellogg's went back to the laboratory to change the worst offending recipes. Folks are going to make choices around what they choose to eat. And we as a company are going to try and make sure we're delivering to consumers what they're asking for. And so on Cocoa Pops, they've asked for something to give them a choice with more fiber and more whole grain in it and less salt and less sugar. So we've done that. We feel good about it. What we've seen is manufacturers increasingly trying to reformulate their products in order to meet the criteria and the standards that were being set. So I'd argue we've had a double win. We've partly protected children directly from the influence of advertising, but secondly, it's been a stimulus to the food industry to reformulate some of its products. Summer 2010, and back in Manchester, Kellogg's is pushing on with its big launch. At head office, its top sales team is being briefed. As you know, in 2010, one of our business priorities was to make new brands massive. And 
In London, the national press has been summoned. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to what is kind of a rare press briefing for Kellogg's. And all over the country, supermarkets are taking delivery of the company's new cereal. Um, it's called Chalk and Roll. It's high in fiber. It's a source of whole grain. It's got less sugar. It's low in salt, low in saturated fat. And this product meets all of the FSA nutrient profiles. Two years spent in development, three million pounds earmarked for advertising, and Kellogg's has done it again. The other great thing about cereals is you can constantly move the dials on whatever is being um, bandied about as the great health uh, solution or, or health problem. So if there's a concern about vitamins, you add some vitamins. If there's a concern about fiber, you add some fiber. If there's a concern about sugar, you can reduce the amount of sugar. What you have to have is regulation. You have to have rules so that they all work.
contacto con la línea Nude Magic VP de L'Oréal París.